Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. As you all know, I love everything nostalgic. But since day one of starting this show, everybody has been requesting me to do a certain CGI film that actually came out rather recently. A little film known as TMNT. I guess since I grew up with the other Ninja Turtle movies, everyone wants to know what I think of this newest one. And since the Ninja Turtles were a large part of my childhood, I could technically include this as something nostalgic. Now, I am not one to fall victim to peer pressure, I just do what everybody tells me in the hopes of feeling less insecure. So, I have decided to review the latest installment to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle films. Is it any good? Is it as strange or even as bad as some of the others? Well, let's take a look. So it starts off with our opening sequence, which apparently is so cheap they couldn't even bother to spell out the entire title. We get a narrator played by Lawrence Fishburne who introduces us to our heroes. Four turtles, genetically reborn in the sewers of New York. Wow. Brief. I mean, jeesh, they expect us to buy this whole mutated turtle thing pretty quickly, don't they? Most people would consider that a little out of the norm. I mean, is the title the only real backstory we're going to get about him? How the hell do you think they describe the Star Wars trilogy? A guy with a sword. His father. They don't get along. This is like the briefest description of the Ninja Turtles ever. Imagine if you didn't know who the Ninja Turtles were. You'd swear you were high listening to this. Named after the great Renaissance masters and trained as ninjas. But now a greater evil is poised to destroy their very brotherhood. An evil born 3,000 years ago. Yeah, we thought the turtle story was kind of slow and a little lame, so we decided to make up another story. Enjoy! And a warrior king named Yauto led a brotherhood. In his quest, the warrior learned of a constellation known as the Stars of Kikin, opening a portal to a world of unknown power. Upon the portal's opening, 13 monsters were released into our world. Uh, are we still in the same movie? When did we suddenly become 300? I mean, you just glanced over the turtle's backstory. What makes you think we're gonna give a crap about this one? You know what I just realized? This isn't a movie. This is an intro to a fucking video game. The warrior king was left to eternally walk the earth, unable to die or forget his horrible mistake. Central America? What is going on? If you didn't show me the credits, I'd swear I was still watching the trailers for five different movies. So, okay, we're in Central America now, I guess. The perfect setting for the Ninja Turtles, why not? As we see an evil crime lord who rules over the good people of a local village. He rides off in his jeep, but is stopped by a tree in the middle of the road. Remove it! Sorry! Who are you? Show yourself! Punishes those who prey upon the weak. He's coming! It is the demon simply known as... Giorgio de Jungle. No, it turns out it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Chupacabra who puts that evil criminal in his place. This draws the attention of April O'Neil, voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar, who gave up her job as news reporter and now has the popular occupation of... Tomb Raider Adventure Huntress. I don't know, her job's never actually explained. It's a long way from the city to just drop in. Okay, so they barely explain the turtle's backstory because apparently they're making this film for the fans who already know it. The fans who know it so well that they have to see the name of the turtles under them so they can tell which one is which. That makes sense! Whatever. So Leonardo explains to April that he's in Central America because his master Splinter sent him there. Why? Because he needs to find his inner bullshit or something to lead the rest of the turtles properly. And how are the other turtles, you may ask? Well, April fills us in that Donatello is a customer service rep for a computer company, and Michelangelo is a children's entertainer. Wait, 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 wait. The turtles have jobs? Well, I mean, I guess they have to get their pizza somehow, but... 
What? Were they stealing the money before? Are the checks sent to the sewer? Do they go to the bank? Do they apply online? What the hell am I talking about? Turtles can't get jobs! Raphael, on the other hand, is turned into a reptile without a cause, as he continues to be doing what the turtle should be doing, fighting crime. Only he dresses up as a fearsome crime fighter simply known as the Night Watcher. Because I guess a giant radioactive green monster wasn't intimidating enough. Your training period ended a year ago. And Splinter says you don't write anymore. Splinter sent me down here to become a better leader. I can't go back a failure. Besides, these people need me more than my brothers do. Did we miss a movie somewhere? I mean, last time I checked, they went time traveling or some shit. When did all this self-discovery nonsense happen? I don't know. I just know something's missing. Like the plot that brought us here. So we cut back to New York, where we see the other turtles doing their normal shtick. Skateboarding, eating pizza, all that good stuff. But Mikey seems to miss the good old days. I remember how they used to feel, busting up crime syndicates. Sure, they had a bunch of guns, but they weren't like these guns. Why'd you do this to yourself, Mikey? Those glory days are over. Forget about them. Get on with your life. Concentrate on your work. Yeah, yeah, smoking like a true has-been. What am I missing? Why aren't you fighting crime anymore? Nobody's stopping you. This isn't the amphibian version of The Watchmen. Just go do it. I would love to know what it is that you do that's so great. At least we're contributing around here. All you do is sleep all day. Yeah, I do nothing. You're right. You got me all figured out. Wow. Remember when these guys used to be fun? That was before every single comic book hero had to be brooding 24 hours a day. Seriously, lighten up! First of all, this team you speak of doesn't exist anymore. And second of all... <laughs> Raphael. Excuse me, I just walked in from Kung Fu Panda. Donatello. His home has become like an empty shell. Each of your brothers... Oh, God. What did they do to this player's voice? It sounds like Mr. Miyagi if he smoked a million Marlboros. If you don't learn to recognize this... Pitiful. So April returns home, bringing a statue to, I guess, her employer, a man named Mr. Winters, voiced by Patrick Stewart. These statues may appear to be only stone, but they're like family to me. But it turns out he has sinister plans, as he's hired some rogue hitmen who may sound familiar to you. The Foot Clan and I have come to hear your offer. The Foot Clan? Weren't they following the Shredder? Since you're so rich and Who's this chick? Is she the Shredder's sister, or...? And how will we know? Are they gonna explain anything here? Don't Hello? Explanation? Backstory? Anything? Okay, you know what? They're just making up anything they want. They don't care what it connects to. For all I know, Michelangelo is a dentist, Leonardo's an all-star, and April's a prostitute. Who cares? I don't! Let's see how they botch it up more! So Raph, while continuing to play Turtle in shiny armor, cuts across an old friend. Good old Casey Jones. You haven't fooled me, Raph. Ah, <sighs> you know it was me. Wasn't that hard, man. You know, you look like a big metal turtle. Uh, is that obvious, huh? <sighs> that should be Tony Clark Kent as Superman. <laughs> So they both sit and talk about how much it sucks to be a superhero. I, I don't even care about Leo anymore. I kind of hope he never comes back. Come on, aren't you being a little hard on the guy? I don't know, it's possible. I guess it comes from growing up with a house full of brothers. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just saying that if it was my brother, I'd find a way to work it out. You know, this isn't exactly what I had in mind when I think of a Ninja Turtles movie. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Giant reptiles talking about things, expressing their emotions, and analyzing them! Tune in next week when Donatello discovers that he might have bipolar depression. Stay tuned! So we finally see Leonardo return home and be reunited with his brothers and sensei. I've missed you, Leonardo. I've missed you too, father. Stop calling me that. I'm a fucking rat. So, now that Leo's returned, they finally decide to go fight crime again. It's about time. But Leonardo warns them that this is just a training mission. All right, but remember, we're only up here for training. You know what I always say, train by doing, dude. Mikey, when have you ever said that? I mean, you're so incredibly underdeveloped, I forget what your characteristics are. Well, their first training exercise is definitely a doozy, as a giant monster is seen attacking the Foot Clan, or being paid to bring it to Mr. Winters. You think we should help these guys? I'd rather enjoy the show. What do you say, fearless leader? I say we stop talking! We must get him back to where the wild things are! 
Come here, Fuzzy Wuzzy! So we partake in, to be honest, a pretty cool action scene. But it's suddenly broken up when Mr. Winters magically brings these stone statues to life who look like the cast of Street Fighter if they ate the Transformers. Right. So they capture the monster and leave the turtles behind. In fact, they capture most of the monsters. As it seems the statues are the brothers of Mr. Winters, who it turns out was the immortal ruler long ago who has to capture all 13 monsters so that when the stars all realign, he can send them back to another dimension where do you really give a shit at all? I don't think you do. The original movies were pretty basic. Stop the Shredder, the end. Do they really think we're gonna follow this crap about dimensions and interstellar dog piss? I really doubt it. That doesn't prove anything. So Raph and Casey find another monster being attacked as they try to intervene. But they themselves are attacked as they hide in a shack on one of the roofs. The police. <sighs> well, I gotta hand it to you, Raph. You sure know how to show a lady a good time. Is there something you'd like to tell us, Casey?